Where's my intro? There it is. Welcome to the Denim and Pearls podcast. Business casual conversation laced with pearls of wisdom. Casual, authentic, unscripted dialogue about life, work, and entrepreneurship with the perfect blend of laughter and seriousness. Pull up a chair, kick back, and lean in as we welcome your hosts, Michelle Mross and Brian Swanson. Hello, well, hello. My name, my name is Michelle Mross, and I'm Brian Swanson. We and are we are. Are, Pearl. <laughs> How are we going to get this straight? <laughs> I have to take my earpiece off because you're in a delay. But we are Denim and Pearls. We are business casual with pearls of wisdom from the not porch, from numerous porches today. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, before we get started on everything, let's get the formalities out of the way. Welcome to the porch, and these are our sponsors. Thank you for iBuildSEO.com. You'll see them more in the middle. And then we have A Squared Promos, A2Promos.com. They do all of your swag needs. Then Ink182, Ink182.com. And they do all of our embroidery and screen printing needs. And then, of course, we have Embellished Butterfly, which does all of your bling needs. And then, of course, my shoe lady. We have EuropeanHeels.com. And I just realized heels is spelt incorrectly on the bottom. Europeanheels.com forward slash discount forward slash Marcel, M A R C E L L. Heels is H E E L S. Is it really? Yes, it is. So my name is Michelle Ross, and I'm a spell check editor because we always have it small print on the bottom, and I'm on my laptop, so I'm a lot closer than I normally am, and I can see the print on the bottom of the screen right now. <laughs> is that better? <laughs> Think of all those Thank sales we missed. <laughs> no, if they couldn't find it, they would just say, hey, print denim and pearls, you guys, what, what's going on? So I am here in Orlando, Florida, and our topic tonight, today, actually, is uh, an old dog new tricks, right, Brian? Yep. Old dog's new old tricks. Dog's new tricks. I, I find this and, ironic because uh, you brought it up and I had the conversation with somebody else, and then it also turned around and had another conversation after you brought it up. It's like crazy. So I think it's it meant to be. Yes. Uh oh. Aaron says uh there's a slight delay. Yes, there is. There is, because I, I have to wait to finish for wait for you to finish before I speak. And then my, my screen keeps pausing. But the old It reminds me of the day when we were in the military and having to call over from overseas. You had over? to wait on the echo to finish before somebody could respond to you. <laughs> you have to end with over. Well, yeah, well, that, that's that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> so, so uh, hello, Helene. Hello, Aaron. Hello, uh, Michael. Hello, Marcel. Over. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Are we going to do this all day, all day long? Over. <laughs> Red Rover, Red Rover sent, you know, Brian right over. No, but I wanted to talk about old dog new tricks because... You know, I was coming out to Orlando for this uh, media boot camp with Angel Tussie. And someone asked me, why in the world are you going to go there? I mean, you're doing so much. You're already a coach. You're ready to go. Who else are you going to be learning from? And I say it over and over again. I'm not saying over yet. Over and over again, that even coaches have coaches. And if you ever need a coach who doesn't have a coach, think about that because coaches need coaches. So here I've been doing all this stuff. And I'm in this room thinking, well, I, I do a lot of this. But the important part is you can always learn something new. And I wanted to bring that up because I go to a lot of conferences, right, Brian? I mean, you were just with me at another conference a week ago. And yeah, but this one was all girls. Something. They wouldn't let me come. No, this one isn't all girls. <laughs> oh, no, I thought it was. <laughs> no, no. You just led me to believe it was. I, I can't got it. Yeah, so you wouldn't follow me. <laughs> But it's really cool to be in this room and learn so much about media because, you know, we're in the media. We're part of this. But there's a lot of background things that we don't realize happens or needs to be happening. And I'm here learning all that process. And that's old dog, new tricks. Yes, I'm the old dog and I'm learning new tricks. And we'll bring it back to Denim and Pearls and to Michelle Moroff's Inc. and everything else we do, Amplifluence, you name it. It's going to come back in because 
Angel's an, an expert in in media, not social media, media, the news, the the, the TV, the you know newspapers, print, that kind of stuff. And um, the reason I came is when I won the ultimate speaker competition in July. Um, she was one of the judges, and when I won, this is the pa- one part of the package that I won as the ultimate speaker of Orlando, and nice. she invited me out to come to this one because it was in Orlando again, and here I am learning. Cool. Yes, Brian is the old dog, Helene. Over. <laughs> oh, geez, thanks. <laughs> I'm actually older than Michelle, not by much, but I'm older than Michelle. I, I, th- I think, I mean, yeah, it's great that you're there, and I part of that is continuous learning. I do believe, especially what you're doing right now. It's a continuous learning that we all have to learn. That's why we always tell people that, or we do it ourselves. You know, you've got to read books. You've got to watch, you know, other people who are more successful than you are. Listen to video, listen to uh, audio books. All these things are all as far as learning goes, they're continuous learning. So I don't look at that necessarily as an old dog, new tricks. I think it's just a continuous, it's a, it's a continuous way of improving ourselves all the time. So what you're doing is an, is is a constant improvement. I think where the old dog new trick comes in is the fact whether somebody's willing to learn something or not willing to learn something. I mean, there's technology is one of them. And that's one of the things that you're learning. There's some stuff there that you probably haven't seen, especially when it comes to uh, media news, newspaper, stuff like that, because that's not our world. Okay. It needs to become some of our world. Yes. But I don't see it as an old, an old trick, if you will. Uh, I don't see it as teaching an old dog, new tricks because you're always willing to learn it. And I think that's a, a, a major player in this whole thing. Well, and I was just thinking about it being old dog, new tricks because people do, Oh, I've done that before. Oh, I know social media. Oh, I already did that. Well, the thing is, is in the world that we're in, there's never an end to this. It's you're always building. It's that always mm-hmm. knowledge. And so that's where I got the name, the old dog, new tricks, because there are so many who are in whatever business you're in, who says, I don't need to learn or, Oh, you know, that those new fangled, you know, square tappy things. I don't want to do that with my pay system. That's just all that technology. I don't want to deal with. You're not going to get people to pay you if you don't have some sort of remote way of them to pay. And I've met right. many, many entrepreneur who says, well, I, I, I would still rather deal with checks. Oh, no, that cash app. Oh, I don't deal with that because there's too many fees. It's our world where someone wants to be able to take their phone, right, mm-hmm. and tap it and be done with it. And if you don't have that, that's the old dog, new trick idea. Well, I, I'm going to go back to move with, with, with that part of it. Look at your sister. With the with the karaoke stuff, you were telling yeah. me she's got a, a square or whatever right there on her DJ booth to take tips. She I has mean, a QR code on her DJ booth. <laughs> I mean, to take tips that tips that go to her cash app or whatever the case may be. I I never even dreamed of that because I'm so old school that it's like put a dollar in the jar or ten dollars. I don't care what it is, but put a dollar in the jar. I never thought about here you know, hit this QR code and beat me your money. <laughs> Ask anyone under 30, do they carry cash? I most, of, well, I don't either most of the time, but. Exactly. But definitely under the age of 30, it's a click. It's a tap. It's a scan. It, it, there is no money exchange. It's all digital. So her QR code was freaking brilliant. And I, I went up, came up to Brian and said, you need to do that in your karaoke. Because think of all the people. I mean, I don't. I when I go to the bars with uh, with Brian and all the um, the girls and, and Dean and and Troy, we go karaoke. I don't carry money. I have a credit card, or a debit card actually, and my driver's license. That's right. It. Yes, Michael. Um, his library is of um. Four, Shh, not don't give away my secret. <laughs> That's my He's album library. Album. He's got an album library behind him. Just <laughs> oh, Aaron. Yes, Aaron. You you, Aaron's going to be 40. Yeah, but she she is almost old. Almost, not quite. <laughs> but no, it, it it really does. I mean, we have to we have to keep up with technology in order to basically get along. I mean, there, you can still do it. I mean, there was a time that checks were a big deal. 
But now, oh, well, I have to, write you have to tell that online? Helene. Well, Helene says she carries cash, but Helene, you're over the age of 40, right? It's, it's an age generation where, and that's what I was talking about that is the younger generation does not carry any cash. And then those of us who are 50 and above, we tend to have cash with us. My husband, Michael, that man always has cash with him and he always right. pays cash. And so, and it's really, well, and Erin's an old soul because she still carries um, checks, but that's the whole thing about this old dog day trick. When you're looking at your business, think about what do you do in your business that you could improve on. So like today, what I, yeah, Nathan's a baby. He doesn't even know what cash is. Um, <laughs> when we were in this class today, she was talking about how quick media moves. Look at social media and how fast it moves. Now we put out things and we say, oh, well, I'm having an ad today and I'm gonna put it in the newspaper. How many people are actually reading that newspaper in particular? With Media Blast, it goes to every form of media that's out there and it's updated very mm -hmm. quickly and so that's what she was talking about the the changeover so quickly in how our world moves and so many of us just rely on facebook and whatever but there are people outside of that that sphere that don't look at facebook so like our demographic is 30 right. and above well, okay, it does, that means it, it, we're losing that means we're losing the 50s right it, well it begs the question and i've asked this question even since galaxy fest how do you reach the people outside of Facebook or Instagram or TikTok? I mean, you can take all those social media platforms. There's a lot of people out there that are within our target market that you go, how do I reach you? I mean, I've had people say, well, I haven't heard of that. I haven't seen that. Well, that's because I actually haven't talked to you. Yes. And, well, I'm <laughs> thinking you, my older brother. How do you reach those people? My you know? older brother does not even carry a cell phone. Well, that's scary. <laughs> so you think about it i mean the people that we do some of them that i mean they may not be in our demographic you know but when you're in a business of entrepreneurship you need to one know your demographic and know where they're hanging out and mm -hmm. if you look at most entrepreneurs most of us are hanging out on facebook well, i can tell, assure you if you look at who your real demographic is you need to find out where they are they could be on instagram they well, can be on only TikTok. I mean, you don't know what they are, so you need to know that. Old dog so new tricks, you've got to be where they are. Taking it back to old school, I mean, it's like, it, and I'm going to be very general about this, but going into, into the dating scene, I mean, it, back in the day, how did, you, how did you date? You went to where you thought the people that you wanted to date were at. So if you went to the bars, you were looking for somebody who was having fun time or whatever the case may be. Whereas if you went to church, you were looking for the one that, you know, a little more upscale or nice and wasn't out hanging in the bars kind of thing. Uh, you always pick the pond to fish in. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a very generic term, but you always pick that pond. Now, when we look at this from a business standpoint and we look at it from how do we get more clients, we have to know who we want first. Then we have to figure out which pond to fish in. Do you mm -hmm. fish in Instagram? Do you fish on radio? Do you fish on TV? <laughs> There's all these options that are out there. And back to the old no odds, new tricks things. If you're not following your own demographic and understanding where they're at or what pond they're in, or even not understanding your demographic, you need to be taught a new trick. You really yeah. do. And, and that's you, the old dog new trick. You've got to keep learning. So if you haven't gone to a course or looked at a YouTube video in order to grow yourself in one, state, one way, shape, or form, go learn something new, something you've been curious about, and find out more about it. <laughs> I like Nathan. Nathan says he's behind the times. <laughs> yeah. Go to MySpace. MySpace. You know my MySpace account is still up and running? <laughs> it's not used. Really? But it's, I, uh, I actually ran across it here recently. I took all the stuff off of it. <laughs> that's funny. So really, that's it. The old dog, new trick is basically what I'm talking about with the entrepreneur thing. And what Brian and I are talking about is if you haven't reviewed what you do and the people that you take care of, okay, the people you serve, you need to review that. Check out where they are. Where do they hang out? What pond are you supposed to be fishing in? Because you could be talking to a deaf audience, basically. You're, you're hanging out. Say your demo, it's easier to do it this way. Your demographic 
are millennials. They are not on Facebook. They're definitely not on MySpace, but they're not on Facebook. They're probably on Instagram and TikTok. Okay. Yep. So I've been know laughing. where your audience is. What? Because <laughs> what? It took me a minute to read what she wrote, but I got it now. Oh. <laughs> She's saying I got some bills due at the bar. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, we need to, we really need to go to our commercial and then we'll come back. And I got some, a couple other things too that I think I want well, to chat about. Well, there's something you didn't say. You didn't say about, uh, to follow us on Denim and Pearls podcast at gmail.com to write us if you're interested in being one of our sponsors. And then go to Facebook and um, YouTube and subscribe and make sure you watch us. And what's the other thing? Watch us and subscribe on whatever your favorite platform is to watch or listen to podcasts. There, now we can go to commercial. Should I say it again since you reminded me I didn't say it? No, I just said it. Go. <laughs> Off to our commercial. <laughs> Contractors, do you need better cash flow, quality leads, better projects? Rise above your competition by proving you do better work. Make a solid first impression with strong reviews. Establish your credibility by showcasing your skills. Extend your reach so you can land better jobs with better clients. iBuild SEO will set you up for success with your search engine optimization, website development, social media marketing, content marketing, reputation management, review request system with the power of more utilizing the construction contractor's digital dominance method. Book your time to speak with us today at iBuildSEO.com and click on the Get Started Now button. Thank you for joining us on the porch. We share the nuances and lessons we've garnered from throughout our combined 40 years of life experiences. Talk from the porch is always serious, but full of laughter. And we're glad you're here with us. Like, share with a friend, and please subscribe to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. And remember, join the conversation every Friday at noon Mountain Time. We'll see you on the porch. <laughs> Welcome okay. back. Okay, before we move on, I have to go back. Helene said something about um, her spelling or something. It wasn't because of her spelling or anything in her thing that I read. It was just trying to read it really quickly between the two. <laughs> and <laughs> so say, now I understand what it was. Spelling. It had nothing to do with her spelling or, or anything else, punctuation, none of that stuff. It just, it was the fact that I couldn't translate it all at one time. It's, so it's anyway. really hard to be talking and seeing the words on the side. And so if yeah. you see a stutter or if we, we pause, it's because it's really difficult to be talking to each other, listening to each other, and then reading on the side at the same time. So it's just it's the same. It's called multitasking. So and I have like five things going on all at once over here. <laughs> now, I wanted to say, for those of you who have just joined us, my name is Michelle Moross. And I'm Brian Swanson. We are Denim and Pearls. We are Business Casual. With Pearls of Wisdom. From the proverbial porch. And um, I am in Orlando, Florida, attending Angel Tussie's um, Media Mastery Boot Camp. And someone just brought me a pina colada. Say hi to Sally. <laughs> do you like pina colada? Yes, I do like pina colada. Thank you very much. So I just, I'm distracted. <laughs> Well, it is late afternoon or beginning of afternoon over there, so you, you know, you're allowed this. I, yeah, I just two-hour difference is crazy. Yeah, two-hour difference is crazy. Oh yeah, but we're we're still here. We're live. We're here for you, right? So, what did you want to share that right before commercial? I totally forgot. But uh, <laughs> I, I think it's old dogs, new tricks. I, I, with that topic, I think it's. I, I got to go again back to that willingness to learn. Well, because that's the whole thing about old dog new tricks. If you're 90 but, year old, but you, you can to learn how to old, do technology. But, but the old dog new tricks is someone who doesn't want to. And that's what the show is about. In order to move with the time, you must adapt. You must learn. I mean, there are people who still insist on having phone books because they don't want to look on the internet to search people. And uh, they don't make phone books anymore, you know? So I get one in my driveway about every five years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's the whole thing about the old dog new tricks. 
some of us have had businesses and some people have had businesses for like 20 something years and they don't want to change the way they do things or they still do their books on only paper and at tax time, you know, the poor tax person is going through loads and loads of papers and buckets of paper. Time to change and upgrade so that you can be more efficient. Old dog, new tricks. Yes, you may be the old dog. Yes, you may like the way you do it. It has been working. But one of the biggest things as a quality examiner, as I used to be a quality examiner, is when someone says, we've always done it this way. No. Right? Yep. When, when they say, we've always done it this way, your biggest thing is, okay, then we need to look because well, you need to adapt. Well, some people are, I mean, and I'm kind of under this philosophy too. A lot of things, they come, they, they work in circles. Everything is cyclical in everything that we do. You know, there's going to be a time when social media, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, when social media is not going to be effective. There will be a time. That's because radio will take over or the newspapers will come back for whatever social reason that we have out there. Everything rolls in a circle. I mean, just look at fashion. I mean, when was the last time you seen bell bottoms? We think of the 70s, but you know what? They're still out there. They're part, hot, part of the high fashion area. About to say they're back. They've been back for about eight years. Yeah. Well, they haven't really taken hold like we did, but <laughs> I mean, bell bottoms are, I mean, but everything is in a has a cyclical thing to it the type of music we listen to all of that kind of stuff why do you think we're going through this phase right now where all of the new shows are coming out are remakes and updates to our 80s shows you know it's it's crazy now i did watch one last night and they they did a great job with it by the way uh will smith's new one but he directed and everything else so a lot of it stayed true to the old original show, but a What's lot of that? it, it's called Bel Air now. It's on Peacock. Oh, oh, okay. It, they did a really fantastic friends. job with it. But if you have your brain stuck in the fact of the old show, you may not want to watch the new show if you're not open to new ideas, because it does. It, it actually captures a lot of the stuff that the original show did not capture in the first episode of the new one, it captures why he left home, you know, because oh. we always, you know, he left West Philly to move to Bel Air. Well, they actually cover that in the first episode of why he left West Philly. Okay. okay. So, but they did it with a modern day twist as if he just left last week. So, but it's, again, it's, if you are still into the old original versions of a lot of these new shows, which were, um, innocent type shows <laughs> I guess you could say for the day in the 80s and the 70s and the 80s they're redoing them to modern day well if you're not open to new new ideas and you're not open to today's societal type things you probably don't want to watch some of these new ones because they will disappoint but if you're well, open-minded they're amazing well I wanted to get to uh, relationships because that's what we usually do on the second half of the show and uh, old dog new tricks how many of you have been married for more than 10 years? How many of you have been married for more than 20 years? You know, uh, if you've been in a relationship, either actually even your own families where you're your brothers and sisters, and you look at them and you do, God, sometimes you just annoy me. It's that whole old dog new trick. You can't expect a relationship to be exactly the same for your entire duration of the relationship. It also evolves, it also changes, and you also have to um, keep playing, basically. You have to learn the new person. And mm -hmm. I wanted to bring that up because we were talking about that in the course, is that we were like, well, 20 years ago, I would have never done that. Exactly, that was 20 years ago, right? Right. I didn't say anything. It's getting loud. No, it's getting loud, so you might want to start talking just in case I have to mute. Oh, it actually sounds really good. You still sound good over here. Okay. So, but no, it, that, so we go from business to relationships. And I think with the old dog, new tricks, is a lot of times like um, Michael and I have been together for like 39 years or something. And it's like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, 39 years. But you, you, we, you take things for granted when they've been around that long and you don't, you don't evolve. We're not the 14 and 15 year old boy or 14 and 16 year old boy, boy and girl that we were. Why would we expect that exact same thing to still be working? Well, 
we went to the movies and we had popcorn. Things yeah. change, you know. So what what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I want a hot dog. Up? Yeah. I want some what's up? I want some raisinettes. I don't know. But well, the, now the you can get is, beer. <laughs> you've got to evolve your relationship too. So don't expect things like you know, you've been married for like three years and you're like, oh, but we, we used to always be holding hands. It's been three years. Mm -hmm. yeah, if things don't feel right, fix it. Yeah, I, I think it goes along. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of the stuff with, you know, the wife and I, there's certain things that we don't do that we used to do. I mean, we used to go out all the time. Um, we used to go out party and doing stuff like that. Well, she comes to the conclusion now that, yeah, no, that's not happening. You know, she doesn't like just sitting around like we used to do and and BS and get drunk or, or just drink or whatever. Have a good time. Um, it's not always a point of getting drunk. But, yeah. you know, nowadays it's like you want to go with me. No. Why would I want to sit there and do nothing? <laughs> <You know? laughs> we've changed over our how many years have we been married now? Thirty one going on thirty one. Yeah, be 31 uh, the middle or the end of March. Mm -hmm. You know, 31 years of marriage, things have a tendency to change and it, it doesn't matter who it is. Um, but there are still times, I think, because I think of my brothers and sisters who I are like my best friend. Um, I see her or talk to her maybe once or twice a year. But every time I do, it's like we never left. It's like mm -hmm. we never separated. And she's been up in Cleveland for who knows how long. And I've been in Colorado for who knows how long. But we're still, I mean, it's like everything is like boom, 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 boom. Um, so those relationships can do that. But I'm sure that if we were to sit down and actually meet up and go out and do something, Constantly, she would learn that I'm day. different. Than, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'd learn a moment that in time is person. different. Yeah. A moment in time is far different than being there 24-7. Right. For sure. Yeah. So, you know, but we can, I think we can all learn. He is an old man. I mean, <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> Just not, because I've been married I'm, 31 I'm, years. <laughs> well, let's say we've been together 39, but we've been only married almost 30. So. Yeah. But old dog do tricks. If, if you feel stuck and stubborn and you don't want to move on with the times because that's not the way you used to do it and you want to stay in business or you want to stay in your relationship, it's time to look at what you're doing and decide, do you want to shift? Do you want to move a little bit? And do you want to learn something new in order to move on with the times to keep your business busy, a business going and growing? Or do you want to stay stagnant? Same thing with your relationship. Do you want to keep that relationship growing? Do you want to be stagnant? Or in a relationship case, let it end. You've got to decide these kind of things with the old dog new trick idea and continually learn, not from the outside, not just from the outside, but from your inside and from the people you're with. Well, I, I think you bring up a, po a good point there. Some of it is just self-improvement, self-engagement. Um, it was brought to my attention here just recently, the other day, that maybe some of my vocabulary is not exactly where it should be for what I'm doing. And I'm going back and I'm looking at some of this stuff. And I actually did some self-evaluations on this to see where it's at. Now, I don't completely 100% agree with the, per, you know, the, the statement the person made because I'm looking at this stuff going, wait a minute, the, the, this, I don't see where this is coming from. But at least I went back to evaluate it. And I might even go back and evaluate some of our shows and stuff and look and see and, and look and see if anything is there that I don't realize. So it's mm -hmm. back to self-evaluation again. It's back to learning. Did I Do I have habits that I don't know about? I mean, I do know I have habits. Like I like to blend words together sometimes. I know that, you know. But it's, to me, that's part of me. That's part of the way that I've, you know, I have grown up. It's the way that I've learned things. But it doesn't st stop me from evaluating it. Exactly. You know. <laughs> Aline says, go back to Texas. I don't know if I want to learn that. <laughs> she can teach me how to talk. <laughs> I said, I don't even think that's a. I don't even think that's a Texas accent. It's too fast. <laughs> well, whatever. I just. <laughs> but yeah, but definitely, it's it's continuous learning, continuous growth, and that's really the the secret to um, any kind of success is to keep growing, and success in business and success 
success in relationships, keep growing. Yeah, but now my conference just started and um, I can hear people on microphone, so it's going to get really loud. And, um, well, we're we at our 30 our minute time? mark. We want to call it a day. We should probably call it a day because it will get loud. Oh, I'm getting weird kinds of texts. <laughs> texts. I can't even say the word. We're getting all kinds of texts over here. <laughs> okay, I'm the one with the pina colada, and you're the one who's uh, stumbling. We're I don't know. I kind of like. I, I kind of like your conference. I mean, I don't know of any conference I've been to where I can just walk in with a pina colada. Oh yeah, because the pool bar is right behind us. Oh, ah, is it one of those swim up bars? Do they have one of those? It's not a swim up, but we can literally walk out this door get a drink and come right back into the bar. I mean, from We're the bar into that. the room. <laughs> no, because the pool is a little distance from there and you can't go up to the bar in the bathing suit. You have to be covered up. We learned that last night from the hot tub. Mm -hmm. You have to have at least a towel on you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, that's just kind of strange considering the bar is in the pool. No, it's not in the pool. <coughs> Step away from the bar, Helene. I didn't go to the bar. My girlfriend brought me a drink. Actually, you met my girlfriend. Her name is Sally. She was the one who subbed uh, when I was gone a couple of weeks ago. She subbed she's the me. One, she's the one who started my red ball. Yes, she's <laughs> the one who started the red ball thing. Because she's <laughs> Sally from Dick, Dick and Jane. Yep. Well, it's been all wonderful right. to see all of you again. And um, it feels like I've been gone for two months. And I will be back next week, Friday. And Brian and I will be next to each other again in my office more than likely and we will talk kind of like my office <laughs> no we can switch to your office yeah whatever anyway all right helene still has your red ball by the way so yes, thank you so much for joining us on denim and pearls my name is michelle moroff and i'm brian swanson and um i do not have sunglasses because i'm in a conference hall but <laughs> We will talk to you later. Peace. Peace out.